Welcome to the Pickleball Addiction Podcast. Today, I welcome Braden Unsicker from Pickleball Effect. Welcome, Braden. Hey, thanks for having me, Mark. Thanks for taking the time to come on today. So you're based out of Idaho, right? It's uh, 8.30 for you? Yep. Tell us a little bit about yourself for anybody who hasn't heard of Pickleball Effect or Braden, Braden Unsicker in the UK. I have, a, I have a website, a YouTube channel, and uh, my Instagram page, and I, uh, I primarily do paddle reviews, or that's, at least that's what I started out doing. Now I have a podcast, and I've, uh, I've branched out. I do, I've made a bunch of videos just about, you know, I've done some instructional stuff, a lot of paddle tips, you know, paddle fitting, paddle customization, uh, a lot of equipment, you know, bags, shoes, things like that, and then, uh, that, that's kind of, that's, uh, that's where I live. That's the type of content I make. And, uh, but I, I originally started in like late night, 2019, uh, early 2020 doing, doing paddle reviews. So I've actually been doing this like a really long time, just on the side, just uh, as a passion project, just something mm. I enjoyed and loved doing, never thinking that I would ever be in a position where I could, uh, support my family, pay my mortgage doing this, uh, you know, pickball content, you know, full time. And uh, so yeah, like just just about a month ago, I started doing this full time. I uh, I, I was working uh, a full time job. I've done marketing jobs for a lot of years. That's what I went to school for, and so I I know that stuff. I know that side of business well, and it's a lot of that's transferred into uh, you know some of the success I found in in the pickleball space. But yeah, dude, I've been primarily doing paddle reviews uh, since about 2020, and it's just been uh, it's just been a riot, dude. Yeah, so I mean, tell us a little bit more about like uh, the paddle review start and how that kind of got started because uh, I know that's well, you start to do pretty detailed reviews, right? Um, I think that was kind of something that you spotted as kind of uh, something that was missing from from the space. Yeah, so like so early twenty twenty, I had just moved to Idaho. It was it was my wife and I. We had a, a little a, like a newborn. It was our first our first kid, and. Uh, we just got our first house. The pandemic had just hit and I had started playing pickleball. Then I started playing even more and I was, I was, uh, I wanted to get my first performance level paddle. Like a lot of people do, right? Like you get hooked in like three, four months and you're like, okay, I want something nice now. Uh, but like at the time, like I was, I was pretty strapped for, you know, with discretionary income. I was like, man, I, I don't, I don't want to spend 150 on a paddle. Like this was my thinking at the time. And, but like, I want something nice. And so I started doing some research. I'm like, okay, if I'm going to spend the money, then I want to I want to find something that fits me and works. So doing the research, uh, there just wasn't very much third party information, especially in early 2020. Uh, there was a lot of marketing jargon. I I didn't understand the difference between like thicker and thinner cores. I didn't understand the difference in different facing materials. And I was like, I wish there was more material out there, uh, just more information, because like I'm going to spend this this money and I want to make sure I get the right one. So that that was part of the genesis of of the paddle reviews, and then the other part was, I was like, I bet if I made a website and told people brands that I would review their paddle, they would just send one to me. Then I don't have to pay for it. Like that was my thinking at the time, and uh, and I was right. So I went and made my website. It cost me like I don't know thirty five bucks to go set up this website. I had done websites before from <laughs> from school and other projects, and I was like, hey. Uh, or I, I took like some friends paddles, you know, put some, some, some re written reviews together and then shared that with brands and just kind of pitched what I was doing. And, and it, it, it picked up really quick. I started getting paddles sent to me and started doing reviews and, uh, you know, I, I've obviously gotten way better and my knowledge in paddles has significantly increased since then, but that, that was kind of the start. It is, it, it's, uh, it's a funny start just because my <laughs> intention was to get free paddles, and uh but it's obviously evolved a lot since then and uh i i really enjoy this space i've i've fitted and helped hundreds of people to paddles and I, I get a lot of satisfaction um and enjoyment from doing the reviews from helping people find paddles because the paddles like it's a big part of the game and although it won't like transform it's not gonna like make you a three five to a five oh player but it is gonna enhance your your game like if you have a paddle that fits you and matches you it definitely makes the game uh, more fun it does make you a little bit better uh when it when it matches you well and so i've uh, i've made that you know my goal is to you know help people find the right paddle that matches them i'm a i when i see a lot of other reviews 
uh, online, you know, like there's reviewers everywhere. And a lot of these people will, will review the paddle, like almost as if like how it, it fits them. Mm. And I, I try to avoid that and just, okay, like this paddle may not be the best for me, but it might be the best one for you. Here's the pros and the cons. Here's, you know, the type of player this fits, who it doesn't fit here and, and just approach it that way to try to be as objective as possible. And sometimes that means it's a good paddle. Sometimes that means a bad paddle. Sometimes that means it's an okay paddle. But like the paddle that fits me isn't going to be the paddle that fits you, Mark. Like you and I play differently. We're at different levels. We have different needs. And so my, my goal is just to help people just find that paddle, digest the information, and uh, and go from there. But that's kind of been been the goal for the, the last few years. And I just I honestly just really enjoy doing it. And I'm just very very immersed into the the paddle verse now. And uh, having hasn't gotten old yet. Yeah, that's great. Like it's 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 really hard to find like like good places to go to like try out a whole bunch of paddles. Like like I mean, obviously I do retail now as well, so I got a whole bunch of ones mm-hmm. that, I, that I use as demos anyway. So I get to try out a bunch of different paddles. But for most people, at least in the UK, like. The only place they can do that really is if they go to like a festival or an event where like a retailer is there and they can go and try them out. But how about in the US? Is there places where you can you just go to like a Kmart or a store or whatever and just try some stuff paddles out? Or? Yeah, that's a good question. That's still a challenge. Like, so there's there's a lot of clubs that will have demos. So like the local indoor place here, uh, it's really really nice. It's called the Flying Pickle. It has 18 courts. It just opened up a few months ago. But they have like their retail shop, right? So like Selkirk is the club sponsor. So they primarily have Selkirk demos and they have demos of a few others. But they carry like, you know, four or five brands. And those are starting to pop up more and more. So uh, in Idaho, we have we have two indoor places now. So you can get demos from those places. But even in those scenarios, it's still limited to, you know, the, you know, the brands you can try. You're just, you know, what they have. But that's uh, that's still a big challenge. Like you can't demo every paddle, you can't try every paddle, uh, which is you know part of the value of these online reviews and, and things like that. Because nothing nothing beats demoing, right? Like you just don't know until you hit it. Mm-hmm. But you can get a pretty good idea from uh, from reviews in other places. I mean, but I yeah, like you, you said, like Kmart or sorry, you're saying like yeah, you can't like go to Kmart or or something and, no. and get a demo. Like it's no, got to be that corner. like niche <laughs> pickleball club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, for people who haven't seen the, the your paddle database, it's really detailed. It's, a, it's on pickleballeffect.com, and then there's a, there's a link at the top to paddle database, which kind of gives you a kind of spreadsheet view, right, with all the data that you've collected. So, I mean, yeah, I'm interested in kind of talking a little bit about your kind of process for, like, testing sure. and for reviewing, really. Um, well, let's, yeah, do, take us through that before I ask any more, more detailed questions. Hi, Mark Mars here. I hope you're enjoying the show. This podcast is sponsored in part by the Pickleball Addiction Store and Newsletter. To support the show, please check out the Pickleball Addiction Store at pickleballaddiction.co where we stock a wide range of paddles, balls, nets and other accessories. Use coupon code POD10, that's P-O-D-1-0, to get 10% off your first purchase. You can also check out the Pickleball Addiction Newsletter at pickleballaddiction.news where we cover the latest news in pickleball from the UK and around the world. Thanks for your support. And now back to the show. How do you go about that? Yeah. So like I, I get paddles sent to me on, on a weekly basis. Like I have so many paddles. It's, it's crazy. And I, I just can't review them all. There's just, there's just too many of them. So I have to be a little selective, a little picky on like deciding which paddles I want to, to review. And uh, so like right now, I'm in, I'm in a little bit of, of a lull as we like wait for the, all this new technology to come out. And it's like paddles kind of go in cycles, which is kind of funny. So like at the beginning of 2023, like thermoforming and foam yep. edge injection became a big deal. And like I was reviewing all those new paddles. But like now we're kind of on the tail end of that. And a lot of the paddles that are being sent to me or brands are reaching out to me, they're like they are these thermoform paddles. I'm like I've already reviewed so many very similar paddles that it's it's it doesn't make sense for me to go and – and you know, go review your your brand. And it's a lot of these new brands. A lot of I get a lot of like smaller brands that reach out to me trying to, you know, build some brand awareness and things like that. And which is cool, but like it it's difficult for me to like, okay, I'm gonna go review that same paddle. Like, I've already read this a hundred times. Mm. Um but no, I uh the as far as like picking 
yeah, I don't know why I went on to that cycle, but yeah, picking paddles. So yeah, people send me paddles, um, and then I'll, I'll go, I'll go run each one through the paces. So I go look at like spin numbers. I'll go run spin tests. I look at the power and pop levels. Uh, I look at like the swing weight, the twist weight, and when, like when I gather all those metrics, it gives me a pretty good idea of of the capabilities and performance of the paddle. And then, um, and then I look at the technology. Like, is this something new? Is this different? Uh, is the shape a little different? Is there do the numbers kind of bring out something that's unique about the paddle? And if there's something unique and that I like, then uh, then I'm going to go review it. So I, I don't. Most of my reviews are generally pretty positive uh, because I've I've done kind of that pre work deciding which one I want to review and I want to share about because like it's just it's not worth my time to go give mm -hmm. a bad review to or just go give a mediocre review to some lesser known brand like no one no one cares. But if I go give a good review to like a lesser known brand, cause I kind of like discovered this paddle, then like people are interested. But like, if I get a paddle from say Yola or Selkirk, that just is meh, like I'm going to go, you know, give that mediocre review to it because people, you know, there's interest in it. People want to know how this Selkirk paddle plays. Yeah. And uh, so there's been uh, multiple occasions where I gave, you know, poor reviews for paddles from bigger brands like the Pursuit Ultras from Engage were a big miss. Like I'm not crazy about, you know, the Pad Paddle Tech and Lee paddles. Mm -hmm. Uh this the 12 millimeter uh is a good power paddle but like the 14 millimeter. I'm like I don't really see a space for this especially for the price. Um so like there's all those are that's kind of my process. I like I'll go test them especially when I'm discovering new brands. Like I have to I run through those tests and try to pull out, you know, the, the nuggets. Uh, and then I, I will typically review all of the paddles from the major brands. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, and how do you even go about calculating things like swing weight, um, and power? Like what's your, what's your process for that? Yeah. So swing weight and twist weight, um, for those listening, if, if you're not familiar with those terms, so swing weight is a measurement that gives you an idea of how heavy a paddle feels. So you may have two paddles that weigh eight ounces, but one might feel heavier than the other when you hold it and swing it. That's because it has a higher swing weight and the distribution of the weight is more towards the head while the other one might be more towards the handle. So the swing weight just speaks to the distribution of the weight. And uh, it's more important than the actual like static weight in most cases. So a lot of paddles are going to range between like seven, eight and eight, three like ounces. Uh, the swing weight is going to, um, range between like 110 and 130, 140. We're starting to see some higher ones these days, but, um, so you, that gives you an idea of like how heavy a paddle it feels. And then twist weight gives you an idea of like how stable the paddle is and it, like it's resistance to twisting yeah. from, from side to side, which gives you an idea of like how forgiving a paddle is. And so to get the swing weight and twist weight, I have a machine I use called the graffiti SW one. So. This uh, this machine is like super popular now. Um, most brands have them. Um, almost all reviewers have them now. Um, but for a while, there was only a few of us that were using it and kind of preaching these numbers, just trying to bring some something solid to the table about paddles and describing them and how they play. And um, but yeah, so the, that's what the machine's called. And then it has a couple of adapters to measure swing weight and twist weight. So that one's uh, pretty simple. You plug them in the machine, it kicks out the number, and then I go and, and publish them in, in my database. And then for, for power, pop, and spin, I have a, I used to measure the spin with like using slow-mo video, uh, but now I have a, a radar gun. It's called the, the Stalker Pro S3. So this company, I just got this like two months ago, and this thing has like transformed the way I, I gather metrics, it's been awesome. So this company called Stalker made this radar gun for baseball. It's used for like uh, getting like live metrics and spin numbers and speed of, of a baseball at like big events so they can like display the numbers or, or uh, when they're yeah. like I don't know, looking for, for people. And uh, so the I have some, f some friends called Pickleball Journey that started using it and I reached out to them. I was like, hey, what is this? What is this? Tell me about this gun. So I bought one. And it's a, it's an expensive piece of equipment, but it's a, it's been awesome. So this gun measures the exit velocity of the ball, which is how I measure power. So I'll go take a paddle, I'll hit 10 serves, measure that exit velocity in miles per hour. And that gives me an idea of like how much power you can produce off like a full swing. Um, and then I look at pop. So I pop is like how much power. I guess power or speed you can generate from like shorter volleys or just, just mm. kind of like rebounding. 
And so like, if you're at the net and you counter a ball, right? Like how hard is the ball going to, or how fast is the ball going to come off your paddle? So I'll go do like a little punch volley at the net with just like a little shorter swing, just to measure, measure pop. And so, and then I use that same gun to measure spin. So again, I'll, I'll hit 10 serves and the gun picks up the revolutions per minute. And I, and I take the average and publish that number. And the, so I can pick up these numbers pretty fast with this, this radar gun, which has made it so much easier because it used to take a really long time to measure like the mm. spin and, and things. So now I can get these numbers really fast, determine uh, kind of the quality of the paddle pretty quick, just uh, based off of those metrics. And then, uh, yeah, and then I, I publish those and, and go from there. Wow. So that, that pop number must be, that must be quite hard to get because you, you've got to consistently hit like a, a punch volley, right? Because it comes down to you as right. well at the same time. So do you use like a machine to make sure you're getting the the ball at the same speed each time in the same place you can kind of at least in an approximate way between each paddle getting like a, a similar kind of punch yeah yeah no good call it's not it's not perfect like i yeah. i use the same ball like i use franklin x40s every time i always do it indoors so like i control what i can but there are certainly variables like uh me like i'm a human i don't swing the paddle the same every time and it, it isn't perfect uh, having machines would be ideal. Um, mm. Then you could get those perfect measurements. Um, but at, for the moment, for the time being, like that's just not an option. And uh, so I, I, I do take like I take ten measurements, so it gives you an average. Yeah, yeah. And but sometimes even this, and yeah. So like when you're looking at my database, like you have to compare the numbers to the other paddles in my database. At least on like the power and pop stuff. Like John Q is another reviewer that does power and pop. And he, uh, you wouldn't want to go compare my numbers directly with his because he swings different than me. So like you have to just look yep. at the numbers in the de database. And so like yep. I have like percentiles published in my database, which gives you you know some some context to those numbers and where they fit in. But yeah, no, you're a good point. Like it's it's certainly not perfect. Someday I hope we have machines. Um, but for now, like I think this gives you a really good idea of the profile of the paddle and how it performs. Um, and in some ways it's also good because like if I have an unforgiving paddle, that's going to give me a lower average power or pop reading than a more forgiving paddle would. And so that almost gives you like real, real world numbers. Cause sometimes you might have like a really powerful paddle or a poppy paddle, say like the Selkirk power air, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not super forgiving. So if you miss hit the ball, the power return is much lower than miss hitting on something that's more forgiving. And so the average comes down. Um, yeah. but yeah, that's, uh, that's where those come from. So, okay. Going back to like, fitting the right paddles to the right people so if we're talking about swing weight like where, where who would f what profile a person would best fit a high swing weight paddle versus a low swing weight paddle yeah so higher swing weights are going to give you more power particularly from the baseline just because it has that weight behind the ball that just transfers into it better than than a lower swing weight paddle uh, the disadvantage of the higher swing weight is going to give you a little slower hands at the net so like your reaction time is a little slower and it also will reduce, not always, but typically will reduce kind of the pop level of the paddle a little bit. So it kind of gives you this high power, a little bit lower prop profile. Whereas a lighter paddle will typically have a little less, a little less power from the baseline, but a little more, a little more pop at the net, easier to maneuver. I will typically recommend lower swing weights for those just starting out, just because they're easier to manage, easier to maneuver. Uh, so like something between like 100 and like 12 and 118 is like a pretty safe range, like a middle range of for a swing weight number to look for that'll give you it gives you like enough weight to do the job um but not so much that it's gonna like hinder you so i think that's a good place to start when you're when you're first when you get your first performance paddle and then as you as you keep playing like you start to learn what your preferences are right so like after i've been playing for the same paddle for six months like i got my first performance paddle like you get a feel you're like oh hey i wish i got a little more power from this or i wish this was a little softer i wish this was a little more you start to understand okay this is what i what i want and then you can uh then you can go to my paddle data so say you play the perseus yola 60 millimeter you can go look at my database and say okay this is the this is the the paddle profile of the one I'm currently playing. So like this has a swing weight of 117. I like that swing weight. I like how it feels and moves my hand. So you know, okay, my target swing weight is going to be around 117. And then you can look at the pop and power metrics and kind of filter things and be like, okay, I want, you know, a little more power or a little more this or a little less of that. And you can narrow, you know, using the filters in the database, you can go find a paddle that 
you know, fits what you're looking for. But yeah, I will typically tell people to go kind of go that, go the middle of the road in terms of swing weight, uh, play with it, get used to it, and then kind of figure out what you want, whether it's more power, more speed, and then, uh, and then go find your next paddle. So like that paddle database comes in, uh, like it's so helpful, particularly when you're finding your second performance level paddle, when you're finding your first, all those numbers, it's, it's just too much. Right. Um, but once you, once you have a paddle and you know how that one plays, then you can, then you have like a baseline to go off of. Yeah. Yeah. So I currently use, um, like the Yola Scorpius. Um, I really okay. like that. Uh, like the Colin Johns. I, I, I can't remember if, you re if you've reviewed that or if I, if I even watched your review on that one, but I, I, I was talking to Pickleball Will about it because I was using, trying out elongated paddles for like the longest time. Mm -hmm. And then this is kind of my more traditional kind of square kind of shape, right? And being, I'm only, I'm, I'm like a year into playing Pickleball. And I just found like, you know, this, it felt like I had a bigger sweet spot. It felt like I could miss hit yep. the whole bits and it was just, it was it would be more forgiving in that way which when you're first starting out is probably better and when i was i was on the had uh, pickable will on the podcast and we were chatting about like for people who are beginners like probably the more traditional shape is better than the elongated shape and um, just when you're first starting out but um yeah i'm interested to get your view on maybe that paddle but also like that yeah. kind of point of view as well yeah, no, I, I'm. Uh, I agree. Like, I I think that wider, sh shorter shape is has a lot of advantages to uh, to those just starting out for the reason that it's more forgiving, a little more, a little softer, easier to control. Uh, but that Yolo Scorpius in particular, I think, is a good paddle because it's kind of like this new gen, like control type paddle where it's you you get the forgiveness, you get the feel, which helps improve your soft game. But it's not like so soft that you don't you have like zero access to power. Yeah. And it's uh, so like a lot of like the gen one, you know, paddles that weren't thermoformed just, just lacked in that power category. Like they excel in the soft game, but they just didn't have that offensive ability where like the yellow Scorpius, it's kind of this new gen control paddle where yes, it gives you good control, but it's not like a hunt. It's not completely without offensive capabilities. And I think that's a really solid paddle. I love that it's shorter, wider, and is paired with like a longer handle. Mm -hmm. Longer handles are, are more popular, but yeah, dude, that's, that's good. one. I actually play with the Voler Mach 2 Forza 14, which is a very similar shape to the Scorpius. It's shorter and wider. Like, I don't think that shape is solely reserved for, you know, lower skill levels. It just mm -hmm. kind of depends on, on what you're looking yeah. for. Like in my particular scenario, like I'm taller, like having that little extra reach doesn't, I don't feel like I, I get a ton of advantage from that, but I do feel the difference in the extra forgiveness of that shorter, wider shape. And I think I uh, have more benefits from that than I do from a longer one. But no, dude, it's, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I'll typically say if you're just getting started, get like a shorter, wider paddle like the Scorpius or like a hybrid. Like if you really want some extra length, go get a hybrid length paddle, which is kind of in between yours and like a, the Perseus or like an elongated paddle. So like this is a new shape that got popular uh, last year. And is like now a mainstay. Like there's so many hybrid shaped paddles out there now that are kind of that mixed in length. But those are nice because they do give you a little extra reach without giving up too much sweet spot. Because a lot of the elongated paddles, like the longer the paddle is, the heavier it gets and the smaller the sweet spot gets. And so it's a little more of a technical paddle to use. And so those hybrids are a nice bridge of giving you a little extra length without yeah. giving up too much uh, of the other stuff. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I wouldn't say they just for beginners actually. Yeah, because Colin Johns and Anna Bright, they're not yeah. bad players, are they? So, <laughs> so yeah. no, not at all. It's actually getting a little more popular. Like, that's a good point. Like, yeah, you have Colin using a standard, Anna Bright uses a standard, Anna Lee Waters uses a standard shape, uh, Darian uh, DJ, he uses st like it's it's getting more common. Federico Stacher is another guy. Like, the uh, almost everyone exclusively played elongated for for a while there, and. Because so many pros use elongated, it just influenced the market so heavily. I'm like, ah, oh, I don't think elongated is the best for majority of players. Yeah. And uh, so it's fun to see that more pros are starting to realize the benefits of the shorter, wider. Like, yes, it's more forgiving, but it's also a lot faster. Like Colin Johns calls that out a lot where he says people don't realize how much faster and easier to maneuver a standard shape paddle is. Mm. And there's a lot of advantages to that. That makes sense. And I didn't really think, I thought it'd be the other way around just because of, but now that does make sense because you've got less length and weight. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. The average swing weight for a standard paddle is a lot lower than, uh, than an elongated one. 
yeah okay because i felt like when i started using it as well not only did i have my soft game felt easier but he felt like i could miss hit it and it was okay but he did feel like it was faster in my hands but i thought that was just psychological yeah. but I, it probably no, dude. Was a little bit. you know what you're yeah. doing <laughs> you know what you're doing yeah it's not bad yeah not bad um okay yeah so that's, that's good um so you meant you kind of a well okay because mentioning Anna Lee, do you think she's using the same paddles that you know you're getting on the street that you reviewed you said you weren't quite so keen on <laughs> i uh i do i do think she is she she's uh she's using the thinner one the 12.7 and and that thing that thing rips that <laughs> that paddle type paddle is so funny to me that the 12 the, the it's thir- I'm going to say 13 millimeters. They they say it's 12.7, but I'm just going to say 13. The 13 millimeter that she uses uh, is like it feel like the handle feels different than the 14. I don't know, like I don't know why they're like different, but they are. Like the 14, I didn't like, but the 12 is uh, it's a good power paddle, and she rips it. And I think she's using the the factory one. There's a lot of rumors that she doesn't, but I don't think hmm. I'm pretty sure. I mean. I don't know 100%, right? But I would guess that yeah. she's using the, the factory version. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you think that one that, that one at least is pretty good that she's using. So I just wondered how much better she could be if, if she was using a different paddle. But she doesn't need to, does <laughs> she, she? I don't know how she uses... <laughs> no, she doesn't need to. But no, she, she rips it. That paddle rips. I don't know how she uses that short of a handle, though, because she's like a she uses two-handed shots so often, and like she has mm. like three fingers mm. up on the paddle face. I'm like... Give the girl a longer handle. She'll like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. You mentioned as well about thermoform paddles. Um, it's interesting to you mentioning about like waiting for the new technology to come along. Cause I was, I think it was Brian Lim from building pickleball I was talking to you that he, you know, he mentioned like, Oh, was it him? No, was it, uh, might've been Dale from six zero. I can't remember. One of them was like, one of, you know, China have invested, the Chinese factories have invested so much in the, in the, like the tech, the machines to build these thermoform paddles, they're going to like want to stretch out that longevity kind of as long as possible. Whereas mm-hmm. I was talking to like Chris Olson and he's like, there's no way like we're having thermoform paddles in like two years time. <laughs> like they're, like, gonna, we're, it's, gonna, it's moving so fast. There's gonna, just going to be another other piece of technology that comes along. So you said you're kind of waiting for the new wave of tech. Do you know something we don't? Or is it you just expecting that there will be kind of further evolution? No, that there's a few things going on right now. So uh, I'm going to like this big YOLO event next month where they're going to launch their new paddles. And I have, I haven't hit those yet, but I, I've talked to a lot of people that have been playing with them and those are supposedly pretty hot. And I, I don't know the details, uh, but they're doing something different with the core. Um, mm. I know there's people messing around with like facing material changes. So uh, there's a company called pickle P K K L uh, they're doing like this replaceable facing material. So yeah. like once the grit wears out, then they uh, they have like sheets of like replaceable grit they're putting on there. It's so, like that's a yeah. new one. Uh, but yeah, we're we're, we're going to see a lot of we're going to see some core changes this year. I think uh, so. Gearbox kind of pioneered that with their Power Pro that uh, got pretty popular. Mm-hmm. But there was just some deficiencies in it that I don't think made it great for a lot of people. Just like it was just it wasn't crazy forgiving, uh, which made it uh, a little more difficult to handle. But it has the power that that you know, no one's been able to generate. And so we're going to see more paddles like that this year. Uh, I always thought like a gearbox with an edge guard would be f- a phenomenal paddle. And I, I, I think that's what the guild is going to give us. We'll see. Um, but yeah, then there's the facing stuff and there's a lot of people messing with uh, like weight adjustment features. So we have brands like gamma and uh, yeah, I did us. I, I did us that, that did some weight. So like, th- that's not perfect yet, but I like that they're thinking that way. So there's a few different areas that people are innovating, but yeah, we're going to see some different cores. Uh, a lot of Kevlar, you're going to see a lot of Kevlar this year. We've already seen a few come out. I'm not crazy big on Kevlar. I don't really think that's like a huge innovation. I just think it's more of like a, a preference and feel type of thing. But these other ones are like performance changers. And then, uh, there's one I, I won't talk about, but there's another new core, okay. uh, material that's not polymer that, uh, I think is going to be interesting. Hmm. Okay. Nice. Okay. That's a little teaser there. Yeah. When, when do you think we'll see it? If you I mean you can't mention it, but like who? But like it'll be this year. I'm not sure when. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So, uh, 
in terms of like the paddles that you've reviewed then like if you were to give like your top three right now what, what would they be yeah so that's a people love to ask that question and i i understand why like it's it's a fun question to talk about but like when when i think of paddles i think of them in three categories i have like control style paddles i have all court that kind of give you a blend of power or control and then you have that you have power and so i think there's top three paddles in each of those categories yeah um but like as far as like best overall uh i i think a really good a couple of really good well or excuse me one of the better like well-rounded paddles is like the six zero double black diamond that got a lot of attention last year i just think it's a really nice mix of of everything it gives you the luxury it's just got good for forgiveness it's got the spin it's got that nice blend and so it's this really good all like middle of the road paddle that uh, is a nice place for people to start and kind of figure out what their preferences are so like i think that's a solid uh, overall one if i'm looking at like power paddles i think the gearbox power pro like rips but it it doesn't have that that forgiveness to to make it more like player friendly for a lot of people. So I would say like some of the best power paddles right now are like the engage pursuit pro series. Mm -hmm. They're a 14 millimeter and both the elongated and their standard shape are really solid. You can really rip the ball and uh, they got a good spin, but they're more forgiving, which I like. And they have a little softer feel cause they're not thermo. Like they have a unique thing going with those. And then as far as control paddles go, uh, I think like the Vatic pro prism flash is a, a really solid pure control yeah. paddle. Only, you know, it's a hundred bucks, which is awesome. Um, I'm playing the Mach 2 Forza. I think the 16 millimeter of that one is very similar to your, your, like your Scorpius. Uh, is is really solid. If you like your Scorpius, you got to give the Valera a try because it's it plays very similar to it, but with uh, a lot higher spin potential, uh, which kind of helps on the offensive side and you know kind of makes up for the like the lack of you know power you can generate in some scenarios. But mm -hmm. I think it's a solid control paddle. But I do have like a page on my website that I keep updated. Call I call it my hot list where I have like the top six paddles in each of those categories. And I, I keep that thing pretty fresh uh, with, with all the, the latest and greatest paddles that, I, that I've reviewed and played. And so that's a, that's another good resource for people to go like, okay, I don't know where to start. Go check out the hot list, but like, okay, these are the best paddles in each category. Kind of find one that matches your specs of like length, height, handle length, whatever. And uh, that's a good place to kind of get your journey started. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Um, I think we skipped quite quickly off your what it what uh you know your um your background because we got straight into like the paddles but um, <laughs> i know <laughs> which was which was which was uh which is good and uh, it's, it's really good information you shared but um you, you said just before we start recording you know you've just recently in the last few weeks gone full-time doing this for yeah like, what, what were you doing before that yeah so i graduated uh from from uh, university I, oh man, I think 2017, 2018, uh, I got a, a business administration, uh, degree and I've just, I've been working on digital marketing teams, uh, since then. And I kind of, uh, uh, primarily worked for, for B2B like software companies. And so, uh, I've been sitting with digital marketing teams. Like I understand that space and I was like, I was doing well there. I've, I found a lot of success, but I was never like. I just don't feel like I was built for that, that corporate lifestyle. And mm -hmm. although, you know, I, I did it and I was good at it and I was happy with it, you know, it did its job and, you know, I was able to feed my family and stuff, but I was just never like <laughs> crazy about it. Like I didn't really enjoy my days. I wasn't super motivated and, and like doing this pickleball thing on the side, you know, was, uh, gave me a lot of energy and, and motivation to keep going. I never thought this would turn into my full-time job. But, uh, like since I've gone full time now, like my days have been so much better and like, it's just so fun owning your own time, you know, choosing your own destiny and, and like mm -hmm. the, you know, the amount of the ways to make money is, is, you know, it's just up to you and, and how creative you can be to go make that work. And, but yeah, I've been, I've been involved in the marketing space for, for a lot of years while I was, uh, before I did this. That sounds like me too. <laughs> so uh, yeah. yeah, I was, in, I was, in, I've been in marketing for like the last decade too, so uh, prior to this. yeah cool and you're an entrepreneur like you had your, you've owned your own businesses and you you can uh you can relate to how i'm feeling right now <laughs> yeah yeah definitely i mean i was in the corporate world i worked for microsoft for like 10 years so and yeah i never it was never quite the same as like you know actually i mean it's lots of scary stuff right it's, as well having right. your destiny in your hands and making that leap but at the same time 
just that ultimate flexibility to do what you want. Of course, you've got to do you got to work as well at some point, but the, You're right. the freedom <laughs> and not having someone telling you what to do and going to see a yeah, well, you know, going to see a customer who's just generally rude to you, which I get when I worked at Microsoft. Well, you, uh, you still get some of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. I mean, on that front, like, yeah, I mean, the one thing we didn't mention is you did, for a little while, you had a retail site, right? A pickable retail site, but then you kind of dropped that off. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've I've been experimenting with different things. Like I originally started as just like creating content, doing the reviews, and it was starting to pick up. And uh, I I talked to my I was telling my brother like you know my numbers, and he's he's like a finance guy, and he's like, bro, you like you're doing good. You should just start carrying and selling the paddles. Your margins will be a lot higher. So I was like, all right. So we tried it, and for so for about a year, I, I turned my review website into a retail website, and I carried stock and. And we were doing okay. Like I, I think at at the peak we were moving around ten to twenty paddles a day. And uh, but it was just it was just it was tough. Like it was just me, and my brother. You know, we found like a shipping partner. Like I was managing all the customer support. I was still trying to make mm-hmm. content, and it was just it was just a lot. And we decided to to turn that off and and move back to just making content, doing reviews. And now, like when I do make money, like the ways I make money, like if you go to my website, you read a review, and you're like, hey, this is the paddle I want to buy. And if you click on, you know, use my link or my discount code, then I get like a, a small kickback from that purchase. Like it's nothing, it's nothing big. It's kind of a volume game. Like you have to move a lot of paddles to make enough money to yeah. support the fam. But my, uh, my website's kind of my bread and butter. I, I, I generate pretty good traffic to that just from like Google and, and other sources. And then I have, you know, my more visible pieces like the, the YouTube channel and things, uh, that have helped there. And, you know, over the years, you know, those things have grown and like I've contributed some, you know, some elements to the, to the paddle space and kind of, you know, earn some, you know, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, like respect or just a name for myself. Like the, like the twist weight metric was kind of something I started pushing first. And now like you see twist weight being marketed from all, from a lot of the brands and like, it's, it's a part of paddle speak now. And so like, it was kind of fun to see, like I had that influence on, on that metric and there's uh like when we look at paddle categories, like I said, we have like control, all court and power. I was like the first one to start talking about, like there's a middle ground. There is an all court, there's a power and a control, like uh, help define those categories and things like that. And then there's been other reviewers that have contributed other metrics and other, you know, ways to think about paddles. And so it's been fun to be a part of that process with being on there so early and, and having, uh, having that influence, which is fun. But yeah, so I make money from that. And then over time I've also, I make money from, uh, uh, I have some like products on Amazon that I sell. So like I, I have some overgrips, some tungsten tape, and some oh, like yeah. edge guard tape that I sell there, and uh, that's done surprisingly well for me. This was another one where I was like, you know, like I just, I just live in pickleball. Like this is just what I do. I play a lot, and like I use a lot of products, and uh, I'm, I've always been big into customizing my paddle. And so like I've used lead tape for so long, but like I have three kids at home. They're all five and under. They like helping me you know, customize my paddle and I don't want them getting into the lead tape cause it can be toxic. Like, I don't want anything issues there. And even when you put the lead on your paddle, you know, you interact with it, you touch it, then you might, you know, wipe your head. You might eat something like it's just, it's just not the healthiest stuff to use just cause it is a, a toxic material. And yes, like you're not going to, you're not going to die if you use lead. Right. But it's just, uh, it's just good to avoid. And so I was like, I wish there was some alternative to lead tape to customize my paddle on. So I started looking around and like, Selkirk has their tungsten tape, but it's just, it wasn't light enough. Like, it's just like, you really have to kick that on there for it to like make a difference. And, um, I was like, I'm just going to go make my own stuff. So I went and made my own tungsten tape. So I, I, I sell it on Amazon. It's one gram per inch versus like the 0.35 gram per inch that like Selkirk uses. And like, I can't believe I was the first person to make this alternative to lead. That's actually like usable. And so like, that's, that's done really well for me. And then, um, uh, but it's just like funny, like like you and I, like we're we're pickball players. We know the space. We know what we want. And you have these brands. It's more difficult for them. Like yes, they play pickleball, but not to. They're not like in it like we are. They're not like living it and and like testing everything. And so like we have this unique insight to it. And so I was able to develop that product, and it's doing well. And like it obviously resonates with a lot of players who had like the same problem I had. So like that was one. And then like I sell like some edge guard tape on Amazon where like, this was another one. I was like, I like using edge guard tape to protect the edge guard. My paddle so doesn't yeah. get too scratched up, 
but like all the stuff out there has brands on it. Like I don't want your brand on my edge tape. I just want a plain color. Give me a simple design. And, and a lot of the stuff was like, or like, like if you buy the gearbox edge tape, like it was a specific length. I was like, what if I want to cover my whole paddle? Like, or if I only want to cover the top, like there's all these like little things and like there's different paddle widths. I'm like, what if I want a wider or a skinnier one? So I went and made it. I went and made like a brandless edge tape. I made it so you could, it comes in one roll. You cut to the length you want. There's multiple sizes. And so like just these little niche, small things where I'm like, these things are good, but it doesn't match what I want. So I just, I went and made those and I, I never... Like it was just, just kind of happened onto it. And like those have done well for me on Amazon. And so I'm starting to talk with retailers and get those, see if I can get those in more places, but I'm really big on the tungsten tape, dude. I'll have to get you some cause it's cool. Yeah. Definitely. But yeah, man, those are the kind of the two main places where I make money. And then I do like paddle consultations. So like if brands are doing like R and D um, work, like they'll send me some prototypes and I'll just kind of tell them my thoughts, be like, okay, I like this. I don't like this, maybe change this or, you know, and just kind of give them some ideas of, you know, how it plays from my experience. And so, um, I'm really like one of a handful of people that have played and, and have as much like knowledge as I do around paddles. So I'm kind of in this unique niche position to advise on like R and D projects there, which has been fun. Nice. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I didn't, I had, I, I have listened to you. I think I'm, I've listened to you be interviewed. I'm definitely on Pickable Studio, and I think you spoke about the tape and stuff then, and I kind of forgotten about that. Like, yeah, that was when I was first starting to like dabble in it. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, that's that, those are some great ideas, and yeah, I guess the space is kind of new enough still that there is those kind of opportunities that kind of pop up, and it is the kind of thing we yeah, think. 100%. Yeah, I, I wish I, could, I I'd look for tape, and like it's just it's a pain in the it's just a pain <laughs> like trying to find the yeah. right stuff. But yeah, yeah, you're dead right. Okay, so, um, so, what does it look like then, like a normal week for you now? Like when you're, how much are you playing pickleball? How much are you spending time creating content? Like, what, yeah, developing yeah. products. What does a week look like for you? Yeah, so, I'm, I'm still. It's, it's. I don't have like a, a solid routine yet. I'm, I'm still kind of developing this routine that you know works for me and my family. And, uh, so like before full time, like I, I had my nine to five job and then I would usually play in the evenings two to three times a week and make content after 10 PM when the kids go down. And, uh, it was just, it was just so hard on the family. My wife and I never really got to hang out. And so, uh, it's been such a relief that way where I could spend more time with the, the kiddos and the wife. Now it's been great that way. But my typical day is I'll usually sit down, uh, you know, put my head down to either writing a script, writing something for the website, working on reviews, some sort of piece of content from like nine to noon, um, you know, th do the lunch thing, hang out with the fam. And then the afternoons I've been, I've been playing a lot of pickleball. I've been playing like four or five times a week. We were talking about this offline, but like, it's, so, it's like, it's too much. I, I get now that people know that I don't have the typical nine to five. I get asked to play all the time from people here. Like I cannot <laughs> believe how many people play in the middle of the day i'm like does nobody have a job like i don't understand yeah uh but i i've been saying yes to a lot of that i actually need to curve that back i need to bring it back to like th back to around three max four times a week because it's eating into the time where i can like sit at my computer and and work on you know the projects i have going on but yeah that that's kind of what it looks like right now playing a lot of pickball a little too much got to curve that back but uh I do. Uh, it's been great being able to like when I do test and play paddles, I can go do that in during the day instead of you know taking up my yeah. evenings with my family. And so, yeah. and my wife helps me test paddles. She's the one that holds the radar gun. So like we go pack all three kids to our, this indoor place, and you just look like a circus when we're doing this, but we make it work. <laughs> nice. Um, so what what level do you play at at the moment? Yeah, so I, I compete uh, at the five O level. Um, I think my duper is like a five one, but yeah, dude, I've gotten, I've gotten better over time. I've always been into sports. I've always really enjoyed playing and yeah, it's uh like one of the things I love about pickleball is it's so easy to start. Right. But there's also so much nuance and strategy. Like as you get better, like it keeps you engaged as you learn more about the sport and how to execute and do different things. But yeah, I've, uh, that's where I'm, I'm playing and competing right now. Nice. Nice. So what's the, what's the, growth of pickleball like in Idaho right now you said there's a 18 uh, court facilities but 
about yeah, you? Yeah, so it's it's nuts. It's uh, I mean, it's growing everywhere at different rates. But so like last well, year when I started playing here consistently three four years ago, the uh, like all the public courts are just like packed. So like there's there's a twelve court public court facility in in Boise, which is like kind of like the big city here. And we're, uh, I'm about 30 minutes from there. And I, I end up playing there a lot just cause there's a little higher level competition in that area. But those 12 courts, when I first started, you could go anytime, get a court, play for two hours and be good. But it's to the point now, like during the summers, when you go to these, pu these bigger, more popular public, public courts, it's just paddle lines and you have to, you know, you play a game, wait 20 minutes, play a game. And like, it's horrible. It's just so packed. And then, uh, but more public courts are popping up. Uh, and hopefully it kind of spreads out a little bit, but the public courts are busy. And then we just barely got our first, uh, indoor location here. So it's about 25 minutes from me. It's 18 courts, really premium, really, really cool place. And that's where I've been shooting a lot of my videos and running my tests. And, uh, it's, it has like down hours, like during the middle of the day, you know, maybe, you know, half the courts are full, but like during like peak hours, that place is booked out like on the weekends, uh, courts are being used mornings and evenings courts are being used. It's uh, it's pretty busy, but I, I love the indoor format just because you can reserve courts. No one can kick you off. And I, li yeah. I like that. <laughs> but yeah, dude, it's grown. It's busy. Like there's, I, I've, as I've increased in level, you know, you kind of get introduced to new groups. So when I kind of first started playing in that like five Oh ish range, there was probably, you know, 15, 20 of us that were kind of circling around. Now there's probably, you know, 40 of us or so that kind of play and mix with each other. And so the level here is increasing. Uh, we have, you know, about th you know, three, four people here that compete in like very competitive, um, events. Um, Susanna Barr lives here. She like, she does really well and competes on the APP tour. And so yeah. there's a, it's a pretty good hub. I mean, it's nothing insane. There's definitely places where it's bigger, but it, it is fun to see the growth, uh, uh, you know, just locally. And I imagine it's like that everywhere in the States. It's probably like uh, that where you are too. Yeah, not quite. I mean, like, yes and no, but like, uh, 18 indoor courts, that's epic. I mean, I, I, went, I went out it's to crazy. Arizona last summer and, uh, I played, uh, Desert Ridge where they just had the PPA, um, like yeah, that's fun, aid. but I was, I was in the middle of the summer, so you can only play from like six to 9am and then it was too hot. Right. <laughs> But then I went to like, there's a place in Gilbert um, called Pickleball Backyard, which had, uh, was it mm -hmm. five, I think, indoor courts, which was just epic. It was brand new. It was like six weeks old, at, but at, you know, at, outdoor surface, outdoor balls. And it was just, uh, yeah, that was just awesome. I can't imagine like 18 indoors. I mean, that's yeah. most of our tournaments and festivals. I mean, they're normally on eight courts, but like at, at max, but yeah, got the yeah this facility open. is cool. We've got the English Open. Yeah, that's forty like courts indoors, which is like they're all. Like, is it? Are they dedicated United. courts? Yeah, like you know, pickleball United courts. So like pickle roll, roll out type courts. Right. So okay. Forty of those. So Susanna came to that uh, last year. In fact, oh, I did, to her on one did of you the meet podcasts. her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's awesome. Fun. Yeah, she's great. And, but yeah, so she. she I just listened to her on one of the podcasts and she said it was her favorite tournament of the year. Like the, of all of the tournaments was the English open. And, um, yeah, she spoke highly of it. Yeah. Cause you have Porter or her son on your podcast from time to time. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So it, does she, she lives locally to you then, huh? Yeah. Or, yeah. She's, she's probably like 30 minutes from me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, no, I had some, yeah, that's some pretty cool. Like, you know, APP pros because it was like a tournament power, you know, one of those power by APP kind of tour, uh, tournaments. So mm -hmm. um, they're, they're getting into like kind of international tournaments and stuff now. So we had a few. Yeah, of... I think that's smart. I think it's a good play for them. Like they're the only ones that are doing pushing that international uh, play, which I think is, is clever. Like PPA, like they may be the biggest tour here in the States, but if APP keeps doing what they're doing, they're going to be the biggest tour in the world, which is going to matter more, right? <laughs> yeah you'd think so you'd think so awesome um okay uh one last question then before we kind of wrap things up so um yeah, what, what do you enjoy most about creating content for pickleball yeah the uh so i i've always i've always enjoyed writing and i i if i were like to go back to school i don't think i would get a business degree i think i would get like a 
like a journalism degree or something. And so I've always enjoyed that aspect of creating content. And my website is a lot stronger than my videos. Like I'm a, I'm a marketer and a pickleball player. I'm not a videographer or a, a filmmaker. And so like, I've been learning, I'm starting now to like invest more in that part of my content creation. Uh, cause that's, that's a little weaker for me right now, but, uh, I've always felt like, like what I say and like the actual like meat of, of my videos is solid, even though my presentation of it maybe isn't super strong, but, um, but no, I it, creating content, like I, a lot of like the, those elements are new to me, like the video and those side of things. And so I enjoy learning like that stuff's always interested me, photography, you know, film. And so I'm learning, I'm studying a lot of that right now and uh, I hope to get better at that. And so it's a challenge. This is new to me. Those aspects are new to me. I enjoy that. Uh, but then the, the uh, like the website side, like I've done websites before and creating content there and seeing the growth and success from my website has been a lot of fun and it's just fun, like owning it, seeing it grow. And, uh, it's just, it hasn't gotten old for me. Like I, I get energy from it and I enjoy doing it, especially doing the paddle stuff. Like I just, uh, just, am, <laughs> I don't know. Like I, I think and talk about paddle with my wife way more than she wants. I'm sure. But like, it's just always on my mind. And I, I just enjoy doing it. I, I don't know if there's like a specific, you know, element to it, but like, it is fun kind of doing like investigative you know, kind of journalism of these paddles, like what's good, what's bad, how do I present this? And, uh, I, I think I can express, you know, my feelings pretty well in my written content and hopefully it starts to come through better in my, my video stuff, but it's all, it's all part of the process, man. Like you just got to be consistent. You keep working at it. And if you enjoy it, then it's not hard. Yeah. Now you I think you're being a bit harsh on yourself, like you know. I, I, I know you're kind of definitely working harder on it, but like they're, they're good, they're good videos, man. So you should <laughs> I, I appreciate it. But, but <laughs> when, when I, I guess when I compare it to like the other kind of leading reviewers, they uh, they just blow me out of the water with that stuff. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> those those guys are like stuff. they're video first people, and I I have a different background. Yeah, like. Brian Lim's are uh, like awesome building pickleball, and then obviously oh, he's uh, you know, great. Chris Olson, like they, but they they studied film right and did have done all that. So it's all their background. So yeah, yeah, their stuff's remarkable. It's fun to watch. I tell you what, the, uh, as well, who's doing uh, has got a great editor working with him now is Carl Kazuda's videos. Uh, have you seen those? Yeah, um, dude, um, his stuff's phenomenal. He he is just crushing it right now. His stuff is fantastic. Yeah, I I'm, I'm inter I just interviewed him actually, so he's going to be on the. He's not out yet. It's going to be out Wednesday this week, so we the episode before you. But like, uh, yeah, I mean, I, he mentioned he's got like an editor now that just like can smash out videos. So he's just like doing them as fast as he can because the editor's so good and fast. But like the editing's excellent. It's just funny. It's just funny a lot of the little stuff they add in. It just makes it more engaging to watch. Yeah, so, yeah, I've been enjoying that. Yeah, yeah, he's got a good thing going. Awesome. Okay, so um, thanks again so much for taking the time. It's been really interesting and talking in paddles with you and talking like some of the more geeky kind of technical stuff as well. But <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I I could get too geeky. I think it just comes out. Ho hopefully, it was understandable. <laughs> uh, no, I mean I know definitely it definitely was understandable. I mean I love that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, that's great. Cool. Um, but if just for the viewers, then if people want to find you, where's the best place for them to go? Yeah, so I'm very active on Instagram. You can go message me there if you have any paddle questions. Uh, my website's a good resource, pickleballeffect.com. Everything's just pickleball effect. So yeah, you'll find me the website, YouTube, Instagram. Um, yeah, don't don't be afraid to to reach out. I I, I have one on one conversations with people all the time, uh, helping them f you know fit fit paddles. So yeah, feel free to to reach out to me. You'll find me in those places. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks once again, Braden. Uh, have a great day. Yeah, I enjoyed it, Mark. Thank you.